Hi, it's Megan. So I have been super bad about doing my videos lately and uh, I just decided to dive right in today and take on a couple of really hard videos and one, so if I look rusty, I am. One of them is the Juliet Has a Gun Mad Madam Perfume. Perfume videos are always the hardest reviews to do just because how do you describe a scent? And this one in particular, if you ever read reviews where it goes from like shifting like one thing to something else an hour later and then you get another undertone an hour later and the perfume wears for like 12 hours and you get all these different kind of shifts in it that's this kind of a perfume that is absolutely part of what makes it a harder perfume to describe I feel like when I first put it on it smells very different not totally different but quite different four hours later so these are $145 for 3.4 ounces and so it comes in this case thing, very pretty. And then you open it up and you get the red. And then it's a spray bottle. And uh, according to the brand, they say audacious and scandalous. This green chypra, which I don't pronounce right ever, fragrance revolves around metallic notes of rose oxide, black currant bud absolute, and woody modern ambroxan using explosive and feminine traits, it leaves no doubt about its intentions. Mad Madam has a knack of getting herself talked about and she likes it. So this is uh, paying tribute to a woman who dares. So they say the basic notes are Rose Oxide, Blackberry Bud Absolute, Ambroxan, Cetalox. The style is extravagant, unique, and sophisticated. It was launched in 2012 and doing a little bit more research and finding other notes, it says the top notes are rose, amber, black currant, and freesia. The middle notes are peony, patchouli, tuberose, moss, and jasmine. The base notes are white musk, tolu balsam, vanilla absolute, and castororium. So that's kind of, wow, a lot going on here. So first of all, this is a French perfume, the founder of... This brand, Romano Ricci, is the grandson of Nina Ricci. It's a French-based company. And so these, I don't know, I think every, I don't want to stereotype, but every nation's perfumes has kind of their signature style. And I feel like the French ones tend to be more complex. They tend to be, um, I don't want to say stronger, but maybe there's a lot going on there, more perfumey. My daughter actually doesn't like French perfumes much. I, I do, but I understand where she's coming from. She tends to like simpler scents. This one is a very, and she's younger, this is a very sophisticated, womanly, rich, full kind of a scent. Um, this is not like some light little summer fling kind of a, a scent. This is a heavy, intoxicating, rich, uh, almost dense feel to it. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, what I first notice, I mean, they say this animalistic stuff. So I started researching animalistic, animalistic. When you first spray it on, it has this animalistic feel, and then it dries down. What does that mean? So I started looking at the different ingredients. So Shipra, Shipra, if I got that right, they say this is named after... Perfume Cody Chypra, which was created in 1917. It means cypress in French. It's a sharp scent based on a harmony of oak moss, labdanium, patchouli, and bergamot. So already, what we're starting to get here is kind of a sense of musk, oaky moss, um, a little bit of leather, that patchouli, which is really what incense is, is based on. Um, and uh, a little bit of a pungency, if that makes sense. When you have castorium, that they say is a characteristic resinoid extract largely, largely used as an animalistic note, what I read on like every website. And they say it's wild and bodily lustful and passionate, bestowing sensuality, leather-like, yellowish, odiferous oily secretion from the castor sac of the mature North American beaver and the European beaver, but they no longer get it from beavers anymore. They make it synthetically. And it's got like a tar birch note or like Russian leather. So again, we're getting dense cypress, and I do mean like balsam, you know, 
moss, leather, wood, all of that kind of undertone too. We'll get to the florals in a minute too, those softening florals. Um, but they're not so softening. And then I also thought that this was interesting. When it's diluted in alcohol, rock historia melts into a more pleasant, musky, and fruity nuances. And I honestly didn't get a lot of fruitiness in this scent, even though it says it has the blackberry, what's it called, the blackberry bud, absolute. I didn't get a lot of fruitiness at all in this. They also say that castorium is derived from the Greek word castor, meaning beaver, and it was one of, castor was one of the two Gemini twins of Greek or Roman mythology. Castor was uh, Pollux, it was uh, immortal, but Castor was not. Those are the two twins, the Gemini twins. When Castor died, Zeus heard Pollux's prayer to share his immortality with his dead brother and transform them both into stars together in the Gemini constellation. I thought that was kind of interesting. And it's also known to be a remedy for headache, fever, and hysteria. Uh, and even maybe epilepsy. So as far as, so there we've got kind of the base depth of that kind of masculine scent, really. And then we're adding in rose and tuberose, peony, jasmine, and vanilla. The vanilla, I think, adds kind of a mm, sweet, it's not sweet, but it does add just a touch of sweetness, which keeps it from being a little bit too masculine. So the vanilla is very subtle in this particular scent, but I can pick it up, I can discern it. The patchouli is also very muted, and I think that the oak moss adds to the woodiness. Um, and it keeps kind of the rose, which is kind of a duskier rose feel. Um, I don't wanna say heavy, but yeah, maybe a little bit of a heavier rose. When you mix rose and patchouli, I don't know, to me that always smells slightly exotic. And so you can definitely get kind of a certain exoticism, how do you pronounce that, in this particular scent. Um, the tuberose is a little bit lighter, as are the peony and the jasmine. To me, jasmine is just such a bright um, element that kind of makes any perfume have a richness, but also not a super heaviness in the scent but it is a heavier scent when I first spray it on. When I spray it on, I really get that kind of pow, that power, a little bit of a sharpness to it. And then it does wear away to a much softer, much more floral scent that still is rounded out by that woodiness um, and the leather and all that other stuff. So I think that is all I have to say. If I were to describe this just to sum it up, who's gonna like this? Um, this is a sophisticated, uh, maybe an evening scent or for a woman who doesn't mind, you know, really having a noticeable fragrance that's not really too overpowering. This isn't one of those scents that just like, wow, you smell it as soon as someone walks in the room. This is more like a very sultry, sophisticated, wafting kind of a, a feel. It feels like something that a woman in a French movie would wear, kind of a French noir kind of a movie. Uh, if that makes any sense at all. And I do really like it. Um, I like it more an hour or two in when kind of the sharpness is worn away a little bit and it's got more of those really beautiful floral tones that are softened with the vanilla. Um, but not a typical rose, not a typical vanilla. I read somewhere, it could be a unisex fragrance. I'm not getting that at all, quite frankly. I think it would take quite a bold man to wear this. Um, it's a little bit more feminine than I think most men would be comfortable with. But you know what, if you love it. And then the other thing, I just, the Blackberry Bud Absolute, I am just not smelling any fruitiness personally in this whatsoever. So I hope that explains it. It's always tough doing fragrances, um, but those were my impressions of the scent. Of my... Uh, of my Juliet has a gun. This is actually one of my favorite of their fragrances. That's it. I would love to hear people's comments and thoughts. It's always, like I said, hard to do these. And um, please subscribe on YouTube. Thanks. <laughs>